we try to do entertainment coverage here. Now, for the rest of the hour, pharmacist Ben Fuchs uh, joins us. We appreciate him coming on the transmission with us. He's a top compounding pharmacist and just a great talk show host here on the GCN Radio Network, GCNlive.com. I want to get into digestive system and mood and brain health. I want to talk about digestive system and skin health, weight gain and digestion. A lot of secrets uh, out there that are pretty well well known to folks that have investigated because we also want to talk about solutions here of trying to get our lives together. And I've been following all the stuff that pharmacist Ben Fuchs has been talking about for about three years now, working with Dr. Group and others. But uh, Fuchs has also been advising me, and it's, 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 it's really helped me. I have lost uh, tons of weight. People can see it, feel great, have more energy with really simple things. Uh, and a lot of it's getting my gut in line. Uh, so we're going to discuss that. We're also going to talk about um, this article, Are Probiotics the New Prozac? Think twice how the gut's second brain influences mood and well-being. Scientific American. Yeah, there's a brain in the gut, basically. Uh, we're going to talk about all those secrets and more with pharmacist Ben Fuchs. Ben, uh, great to have you with us. Thank you. Good to see you again, Alex. Wow, so much happening. Where do you want to start when we come back from this break? Well, you know, I always say that health should be simple, and there's nothing more simple when it comes to uh, how we live our lives than the, food, than the food that we eat. We have such control over what we put into our mouth, and when you understand that the, uh, the foods that we eat have an impact on our health and on our longevity and on our disease states, and then you combine that with the, the element of choice, lifestyle choice, it seems like a no-brainer to try to at least understand the impact that foods have on our bodies, on our mentality, on our emotions, as well as on our physical well-being. Well, that's right. Uh, separately, your take on Ebola for a minute or two. They claim no more cases this week, but we've talked to medical doctors and others, uh, a bunch of them, and Forbes admitted they were in a meeting with the media, and they said, no, we're going to cover up what, what the government believes are cases. Regardless, they're disappearing people. What do you think is really happening? Two words here, uh, Alex, immune system defenses. And we're going to get into talking about that, I hope. The gut is the house of your immune system. It's the bulk of your immune system. 70 to 80% of your immunity is located in your gut. Fighting viruses, fighting bacteria, fighting toxicity, detoxification, all of this mandates that we take care of our immune system, which means take care of our gut. So if you're worried about the flu virus, HIV virus, Ebola virus, a shingles virus, now that's all in the news, you can do no better than take care of the immune system in your gut by making better food choices using uh, probiotics as well as other nutritional supplements. Well, that's right. And again, most of our listeners know this, but a lot of new listeners don't. This is revolutionary stuff. And I knew all this knowledge years ago, but I just didn't follow it. Following it has changed my life. I want to discuss this all with pharmacist Ben Fuchs. He's the host of Right Side uh, for an hour every day right before my syndicated broadcast, 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. And it's picked up by a lot of stations across the country, including a lot of our affiliates. We're very Excited to have him here with us today. And we'll also open the phones up for your health questions for him coming up in a few segments from now. Stay with us. Now, I'm going to give pharmacist Ben Fuchs the floor in the next segment. I'll, I'll be here, but if I end up talking any, I'll end up taking over. I want to give him an 18-minute run coming up in the next long segment to really drill into this because Bill and Melinda Gates are investing in weather control, genetic engineering, you name it. But their biggest investment in the last two years is gut flora. They know the BT corn, they own part of Monsanto and the rest of it is manipulating the gut. They know this is all happening. And the gut, uh, as our other guests have said, has basically connection to the spine, to the brain. Uh, the two are connected. Autism with gut flora problems is connected to what's happened with the kids along with vaccines. Think twice how the gut's second brain influences mood and well-being. Scientific American. Are probiotics the new Prozac? The gut-brain axis. Can probiotics affect your mood? Potential probiotic uh, effects go beyond gut. Uh, how your skin health reflects your... I mean, this is everything I heard Fuchs saying six years ago five years ago when I first became aware of him. And then now this year, more and more of it is coming out. Very exciting. So, so this is a short segment. You've got the floor uh, getting into this. And we're not even selling probiotics. I don't even have a probiotic, folks. I mean, even though B12, Secret 12, I mean, is a probiotic overall. Um, it's not a microbe. Explain to people what probiotics are. I mean, I know they know what they are basically, but 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 in a larger sense, how the gut works. Oh, uh, Alex, probiotics are so cool for, on so many levels. First of all, how interesting is it that our 
Uh, our entire lives are run by these little tiny bacteria that live in our gut, trillions of bacteria. Do you know there's 10 times more bacterial cells in your body than there are human cells? So in many ways, we're just like carrying cases for these bacteria. And what do these bacteria do? Well, they make vitamins. They detoxify food. They help us derive energy from our food. They fight cancer. They communicate with the cells of our intestine to accelerate the healing process. And one of the coolest aspects of these gut bacteria is they act as a repository of genetic material that can literally be shared with our own genes. In other words, we transfer genes from our bacteria to our, to our own cells. In essence, we are a form of walking bacteria via these interactions. And almost everything we do on a regular basis conspires to kill off these incredibly critical elements that live in our digestive tract. I'm talking chlorine in food, uh, chlorine in water. I'm talking fluoride in water. I'm talking antibiotics that we take intentionally. I'm talking antibiotics that we take unintentionally. Antibiotics in fish and, and in, uh, in dairy and in meat. All of these conspire to kill off the probiotics, which for most of us are already deficient because of how we, uh, because of the birth process. You know, one third of Americans are born cesarean section. And now we have voluntary cesareans where people are getting cesarean sections just so they don't have scarring on their bellies. This is the latest trend in Hollywood to have an early cesarean section. And pretty soon the average person is going to be encouraged to have a cesarean section. When a baby is born, Alex, it comes out of the, di uh, comes out of the womb and it's supposed to be bathed with a coating of bacteria. That coating of bacteria that comes in from the, mother's, uh, from the mother's birth canal as the baby passes through goes into the baby's nose and into the baby's mouth, and it goes down the baby's digestive tract and implants in that baby's intestine. And from that point forward, those bacteria become that baby's personal, and I mean personal, health angels. In the future, we'll actually be able to identify human beings, individual human beings, by their specific bacterial population. By the way, the bacterial population is technically called the microbiome. And the microbiome, this universe of bacteria that lives in our gut, that's responsible for so many aspects of good health, is supposed to begin at the point we, uh, we enter into the world, as we leave the birth canal and go into, uh, and go into life. Now, if you're born cesarean section, if a baby's born cesarean section, a third of babies are, and more, uh, grow, uh, the numbers are growing, that baby's going to be deprived of those initial bacteria, and that means from that point forward, that baby's health is going to be compromised. Now, it gets even worse, because the baby's digestive tract and the bacteria that have implanted or theoretically have implanted in the baby's digestive tract are supposed to be are supposed to proliferate via the activity of breast milk. That's one of the main roles of breast but milk. But we don't give them that. And then when exactly. they get big, they eat GMO corn that has pesticide in it that All kills the good bacteria. And yeah, all of it. Uh, so here's the deal, Alex. The baby's a day old, two days old, a week old. His health is already compromised for the rest of his life. And the baby hasn't even gotten out of the... They're not uh, getting their colostrum. The the, 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 they're not getting the bacterial coat of all their mother's immunities. They're not sinking with mama. And, of course, the medical system ha at the top has no idea what's going on. It's all been planned. And we even have all the documents. The average doctor doesn't know, though. They're compartmentalized. Pharmacist Ben Fuchs is going to be hosting when he comes back. So, so I was just going to continue talking about the importance of gut health. For you guys who have listened to me on the bright side, you know that I, I love the simplicity of health. We get, we get so confused by all the different aspects of disease states and all the different body parts and all the different chemical reactions and all the different molecular aspects of the human body that we forget that health is really a simple matter. I call it the triangle of disease or the triangle of wellness, depending on how you look at it. Fix your digestive system, stabilize your blood sugar system, and relax the adrenal glands. And it's really not a very difficult process. And once you start to do all of these things, beginning with digestive health, you'll notice that whatever your health condition is, whether it's something as benign as acne, something as mild as acne or, or psoriasis or something as horrific as heart disease or cancer, it will begin to... Uh, the symptoms will begin to ameliorate, mitigate, reduce, and ultimately you can reverse any health challenge, any health challenge. Even, uh, even a cancer, even stage four cancer has a history of remission. Not that everybody remits, but people have remitted. And if one human being can remit, any human being can remit. So how do you do it? If you're dealing with a degenerative health crisis, if you're dealing with a, a, a autoimmune disease, if you're dealing with a skin, a skin condition, what are the practical steps that you can take? Well, first and foremost, you gotta address digestive health. We are manipulated by 
food. We have an empire of food. And it's been that way historically since the days of Sumeria going into uh, ancient Egypt and then Rome and then Europe and now the American empire. Humanity has been manipulated by food for eons, for 10,000 or 12,000 years. So getting control of our food, getting control of our, uh, our, dige our digestive health, learning to uh, free ourselves from the tyranny and the hegemony of the empires of food is job number one. Not only if we're dealing with a degenerative health crisis, not only if we're dealing with a health issue, but simply for our longevity. Simply if, we, if we're healthy and we want to stay healthy, learning how to control digestive health is job number one. As I was talking before the break, it all begins to tumble out of control woefully early. As soon as we leave the womb, for many of us, our digestive health becomes compromised because we don't get that bacterial shower that's supposed to occur as we go down the birth canal in the birth process. When we go down the birth canal, what's supposed to happen is bacteria are supposed to bathe the body, uh, the, the baby's body, and those bacteria go into our, the baby's nostrils, into the baby's mouth, and plant in the gut. And from that point forward, those, baby, uh, those bacteria become that baby's best health friends. If that doesn't occur, uh, either because the baby is born cesarean section or because uh, the mother is not healthy and the mother doesn't have the appropriate bacterial flora, that baby is going to become immediately compromised. As the baby goes through life or begins, the, uh, begins his or her life, the baby's gut is supposed to be further enhanced uh, and further grow. Uh, uh, growth is supposed to further be encouraged by breast milk. Well, we know one third of babies aren't breastfed. So again, the baby becomes compromised at the digestive health level. Then the baby, of course, goes into the standard American diet, and that's really when it all tumbles out of control. See, once the digestive system become comprom becomes compromised, the baby's and our ability to extract energy from food becomes compromised as well. Once we, can once we have a problem extracting energy from food, our blood sugar starts to become unstable. Once we have problems extracting energy from food and extracting sugars from food, extracting nutrients from food, the body's insulin processing and blood sugar process, processing get thrown off. And eventually that leads to conditions of low blood sugar and high blood sugar. I call it the low blood sugar, high blood sugar roller coaster. And eventually that leads to diabetes. And we all know that diabetes is an epidemic just as much as digestive health conditions are epidemic. In fact, one third of Americans are pre-diabetic or diabetic, and this is related to obesity. In fact, it's related to pretty much almost every health condition you can name. The medical model will tell you that there's something called metabolic syndrome. Some of you guys may have heard of this condition, metabolic syndrome. A syndrome is a disease state that has various different symptoms associated with it. Metabolic syndrome has symptoms like high blood pressure, obesity, autoimmunity, uh, inflammatory diseases, movement disorders, mental health issues. Basically, everything we suffer from is associated with this health, health condition called metabolic syndrome. Well, if you Google metabolic syndrome, you're going to find that metabolic syndrome and dys glycemia or messed up blood sugar go hand in hand. So you got your digestive system gets whacked out, starts woefully early. The blood sugar system gets whacked out. That's the next step. And from there, you go into almost every single health challenge you can name. But you know what, guys? That's great news. That's not bad news. That's good news because it means that no matter what our health challenges are, we have an incredible aspect of control that we can employ. We can stabilize our blood sugar. We can work on our digestive health. And once we do that, almost every single health challenge you can name will begin to reverse. Now, if you want to throw something else in, you can work with the adrenal glands, which are linked to the thyroid, but it's not even necessary. It's as simple as stabilizing blood sugar and working on digestive health. So how do you do it? Well, working backwards with the blood sugar system first. How do you work with the blood sugar system? How do you stabilize blood sugar? One of the most important things you could do to stabilize blood sugar is to eat less calories. Every time we eat anything, really, but every time we eat the standard American diet, most especially, our blood sugar goes up. The body's response to elevated blood sugar is to pull that blood sugar down. We get tired or so-called hypoglycemic. We end up going to get some more food. Our blood sugar goes up. Body pulls that blood sugar down. By the way, sugar is, represents a toxic element to the body. Sugar is very explosive. If you've ever put a marshmallow into a, a fire and watched that marshmallow go poof, you've witnessed visibly how explosive sugar is. Uh, sh uh, sugar, uh, there's a, a grain silos in the Midwest that uh, you're not supposed to smoke in because the sugar, which is, which is the same thing as the, the grain dust, is very, very explosive. The body 
uh, has a way of eliminating sugar, of reducing sugar, and uh, it does it very efficiently, at least at first. And as this high blood sugar, low blood sugar roller coaster continues, this is where uh, this is where our health begins to degenerate. So by eating less calories, and I'm talking all calories here, really, not just calories from processed food, but by eating less calories, we can begin to start to stabilize our blood sugar. A second great strategy for stabilizing blood sugar is to eat more protein and to eat more good fat. Yes, I said eat more good fat. Don't pay any attention to the nonsense about keeping your fat intake low as long as that fat is good. Coconut oil, for example, is a stupendously important fat. And not only is it a, a great fat just for giving your body a good, a good source of fat and a good source of vitamin E and a good source of something called medium chain triglycerides, which the body can use very effectively for energy, but coconut oil, uh, coconut oil is also a great way to stabilize your blood sugar. In fact, if you want to eat less food, using a scoop, of, uh, a tablespoon or a teaspoonful of coconut oil before you start your meals is a great way to decrease the amount of foods that you eat and improve your satiety. By the way, when it comes to eating less calories, I don't like the idea of suffering or struggling. I like the idea of satiety, of satisfaction of making sure that you feel satisfied so eating less calories is easy. Remember, your stomach is about, oh, about this big, size of a fist. It can hold maybe two pints, uh, two pints of food when it's maxed out, but you don't really need to have two pints of food to feel satisfied. You don't really need to fill up that fist-sized stomach to feel satisfied. For most of us, we'll feel satisfied with one or two bites. Notice this the next time you're hungry. Notice the next time you're hungry when you decide to eat that after one bite or two bites, you're pretty much satisfied. You pretty much don't need to eat. Now, most of us, including myself, will continue eating. We'll basically finish the amount of food on our plate, uh, or we'll just continue eating if we're in a social setting just because uh, we want to be part of the crowd. But as far as being satisfied, as far as being full, it only takes one or two bites. So eating less food is one of the most important strategies, not only for stabilizing your blood sugar, but for taking the load off of the digestive system. You can also use micronutrients, that is vitamins and minerals, to help stabilize the blood sugar. There's two very important minerals. There's actually three very important minerals that are involved with blood sugar control. Magnesium is one. Chromium is another. Vanadium is another. If you go to InfoWarsHealth.com, you'll find a really cool product called Sweet Ease, which is made with chromium and vanadium. You'll find another product called the... Uh, Beyond OsteoFX, which is made with magnesium. All three of these minerals are very important for sugar metabolism. Zinc is also very important for sugar metabolism. And zinc deficiency, by the way, along with magnesium deficiencies, are really, really common and very tragically common because they're so easy to replace via supplementation and foods. 50 milligrams of zinc picolinate is a great place to be. You always want to balance out your zinc with copper. Other nutrients that can help you uh, stabilize sugar. There's an amino acid called taurine. Taurine's a little bit difficult to find from foods. You'll find taurine in uh, meats and seafood, and organ meats. Uh, high protein foods will typically contain some taurine. But if you want to supplement with taurine, you can use 100 milligrams of taurine a day, two, maybe 200 milligrams of taurine a day. Great, great blood sugar stabilizing effects. Arginine, another super duper amino acid, not only important for helping stabilize, uh, stabilize uh, uh, blood sugar, but arginine is also very important for building, for immunity. It's got antiviral properties. Arginine is also. Uh, Arginine can also be helpful for helping the body secrete growth hormone, and arginine is stupendously important for heart health. These are all, by the way, deficient, uh, nutrients whose deficiencies are really common, tragically common. And I'm telling you, as a, a nutritional pharmacist, as a pharmacist who uses nutrients in my practice, it's hard for me to believe that these nutritional deficiencies, which are so common, are not somewhere located, somewhere behind our absolutely abysmal state of health. This is why I have such a problem with physicians and with doctors and with medicalizing. We really don't need to be medicalized. Yeah, sure, if you get hit by a car, you get hit by a bus, or you have some kind of accident, you may need to have some kind of uh, some kind of uh, surgical procedure done. I call it heroic medicine. Heroic medicine is where they stitch you up after you have some kind of traumatic injury. But in terms of chronic, long-term degenerative diseases, the kind of problems most of, most of us are dealing with, whether they're blood sugar problems or heart problems or immune system problems, these are not issues that we need to be 
uh, interfacing with the medical model for. These aren't doctor issues. These are issues that involve lifestyle and lifestyle choices around blood sugar and around food and around uh, working with the adrenal glands as well, which hopefully I'll get to here in a second. So anyway, stabilizing blood sugar, eating less calories, using coconut oil, um, uh, using micronutrients like chromium vanadium, which you'll find in the sweeties, using arginine and taurine. The B-complex, by the way, is stupendously important for blood sugar control, especially thiamine, which is vitamin B1, and niacin, which is vitamin B3. In fact, niacin is actually part of something called the glucose tolerance factor, which is a complex of chemicals that the body makes in order to process glucose. Here's the really interesting thing about the B-complex. The B-complex is water-soluble which means it dissolves in water, which means it dissolves in the watery part of the body, which means it's excreted out of the body every time we urinate. This is so important because every time we go to the bathroom, every time we urinate, we lose our B-complex. In other words, every time we urinate, we lose our ability to process sugar. Oh yeah, by the way, magnesium, which is also important for sugar processing, is water soluble too. So we lose our B-complex, we lose our niacin, we lose our thiamine, we lose our magnesium every time we urinate. We lose our ability to process sugar every time we go to the bathroom. Now how many folks are replacing their magnesium every time they go to the bathroom? How many folks are replacing their B-complex every time they go to the bathroom? The B-complex, by the way, is not just only, it's not only important for sugar metabolism, the B complex is also important for energy, and it's also important for brain health, and it's also important for the immune system, and it's also important for the digestive system, which means every time we go to the bathroom, we lose our ability or reduce our ability to process sugar, we reduce our uh, ability to think clearly, we reduce our ability to process foods via the digestive system. In fact, almost every single system in the body, because it depends on the B complex of vitamins, becomes compromised when we go to the bathroom if we're not replacing those nutrients. And this is one of the reasons why I'm such a big proponent of the Beyond Tangy Tangerine, which is liquid nutrients, especially liquid B complex. And by the way, liquid B complex in very high concentrations. So uh, controlling your blood sugar by eating less foods, using micronutrients, using liquid nutrients, making sure you're on the B complex, job number one. Job number two, focus on digestive health. And, and the same strategies or some of the same strategies that you can use for improving sugar control, you can also use for improving digestive health, namely eating less food. This is so important. In fact, one of the craziest strategies that we hear we're supposed to do from the mainstream is to keep eating throughout the day. They call it grazing. Some of you probably heard of this, where you eat five meals a day or six meals a day, and theoretically, it's supposed to keep your blood sugar stable. This is one of the craziest medical strategies or health strategies you could ever use, because if you do something like eating throughout the day, you never give your digestive system a break. Can you imagine this? For most of us, we've gone cradle to grave without giving our digestive system a break for more than one or two hours. This can do nothing but put a, a, a horrific load on the digestive system. And in my opinion, it's probably behind this idea of eating throughout the day is probably behind much of our health crises, much of our epic biblical almost health crises. So eating less food, uh, even to the point of fasting. Now, some folks will say, oh, I can't do a fast. It's too hard to do a fast. Well, guess what? When you do a fast, something very interesting happens to your brain. Chemicals called orexins, O-R-E-X-I-N-S, or some people call them hypocretins, H-Y-P-O-C-R-E-T-I-N-S, hypocretins or orexins are secreted in the brain in response to fasting. Why is this important? Well, it turns out that orexins and hypocretins give you energy. They keep you awake. They keep you alert. In fact, Orexins and hypocretins give you so much energy and keep you so alert that drug companies are now studying these compounds to use them as the latest form of speed in order to deal with things like narcolepsy. But you can make your own hypocretin. You don't need any pharmaceutical hypocretin. You can make your own orexins. You don't need any pharmaceutical orexins simply by giving yourself a food holiday, by fasting. In fact, if you have any kind of inflammatory health condition or autoimmune condition, the fastest way to reduce the symptoms and reverse the autoimmune condition itself is to stop eating. You don't believe me? Try it. Do it for one day. 
Watch what happens when you fast for one day if you're dealing with some kind of chronic autoimmune condition or, or chronic inflammatory condition. In fact, even WebMD has a, an article on their, on their website about multiple sclerosis, MS, and fasting. Fasting improves multiple sclerosis. Of course, WebMD is no fan of alternative medicine or nutritional medicine, but even they have it on their website about the power of fasting for reducing the symptoms of autoimmunity. Again, I don't like struggle. I don't like willpower. I like satiety. So if you're trying to fast, but you have a problem with it because you just can't force yourself to not eat, use soups or use vegetable juices or do what I call, uh, use what I call vegetable waters. So vegetable waters where you take cucumber or celery or uh, some kind of vegetable and you slice it up into thin slices and you put it into some distilled water and you let the electrolytes seep out of the vegetable, out of the cucumber, or out of the celery and go into the water. You can also use a blender. If you use a blender with your vegetables, you'll blend up the vegetables and uh, you'll spin those uh, electrolytes that are in the vegetables in the vortex. And when electrolytes and, wa and water are spun around in a vortex, they create electrical energy. When you drink that vegetable water that's been blended, you'll get that electrical energy and you'll find that you're all, you're satisfied to the point where you don't feel like eating. So using vegetable waters, using soups, especially what I call bone soup, where you take a, a carcass. Hold on, pharmacist chicken. Ben Fuchs. Hold on. Hey, I did it. 18 minutes. I didn't cut into somebody. <laughs> We're going to come right back with pharmacist Ben Fuchs in the final segment. This information is so simple, but so revolutionary. The truth will set us free. The people perish for lack of knowledge. I want to thank all the viewers and listeners out there for your prayers. We're praying with you for a new enlightenment, a new renaissance, a new age of freedom to replace the globalist counterfeit satanic new age. Monday through Friday, we're here 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. live. I'll be back this Sunday in studio for a live transmission. Sometimes David Knight sits in, does a great job. Sometimes it's taped. Most of the time it's live. And I'll be live. I was live last Sunday. I'll be live this Sunday, 4 to 6 p.m. Central Standard Time. Unless we get snowed in down here, all part of this global warming. Going back to pharmacist uh, Ben Fuchs here, I said earlier, hey, I promote probiotics even though I don't sell one on InfoWarsLife.com. But then I was looking over here as we're promoting Root Beer Belly and Flora FX from Longevity at InfoWarsHealth.com. I guess technically uh, I do, but what I mean is I don't really promote it because uh, I end up getting brands at Whole Foods and stuff. Uh, but I have uh, started taking Flora FX uh, and also the enzymes and have really – I, I, to tell you the truth, I don't know about these probiotics, so I just take randomly a whole bunch of different ones. I don't know if that's probably the best thing I'm doing. Uh, what's your view on that, Pharmacist Ben Fuchs? Right, we, there's two ways to do your probiotics. Number one, what you're talking about now, by supplementing with them, with the root beer belly, the Flora FX. So I, there's a product called BioLumin Nightly Essence, which is a longevity product, which is my favorite probiotic. And then there's the second way, which is to eat fermented food. Traditionally, indigenous cultures have always eat, ingested fermented food. So sauerkraut? Foods. Exactly, sauerkraut, fermented cabbage, fermented beets, miso, tempeh, uh, pickles. There's so many different ways that you you can get fermented food. Okay, so I love diet. all that, so I'm good. Go crazy with it. In fact, you can subsist on it. When, a, when bacteria act on these foods, they release the nutrients, so they make it easier for the body to absorb those nutrients. And that's really what it's all about, Alex, making it easy for the body to get nutrition. These are all the things our ancestors developed over yes. thousands of years. Yes, they, uh, they've been doing it for, thousands, for millennia, and it's only been the last 200 years that we figured out artificially how to take the nutrients out of food and sell humanity the carcass the dead body of the food you know why they do that by the way do you know why food processors take the nutrients out of the food and leave us with the carcass it's because when you take a, the nutrients the micronutrients the vitamins and the minerals out and the fats out of the foods you need more just, no the foods last longer oh sure the bugs, yeah the bugs won't eat them the bugs aren't stupid. They're not going to eat food that has no, no nutritional value. Only we eat those foods. So the foods have their nutrients removed so they'll have shelf life. Oh, exactly. That's why they're doing GMO tomatoes and tomatoes. But secondarily, I mean, I know McDonald's has admitted this. They like to take the nutrients out because then, as you said, it lasts longer. But also people are hungry again. And they keep eating over and over and over again. This is why people lose weight once they start a micronutrient program. This is why the Beyond Tangy Tangerine causes weight loss, even though it's exactly. not really a weight loss problem. That's how I first lost my first 25, 30 pounds. Now I've lost 20 more. You feel uh, satisfied. You feel satisfied quicker. And that's really what it's all about. Well, I'm saying, 
you know, I was saying before you, when you were gone, it's not about willpower. It's about satisfaction. And satisfaction is regulated by nutrient content. A little so less talk, a little more action. Satisfaction, absolutely. Well, InfoWarsHealth.com, InfoWarsTeam.com, if you want to become a longevity distributor, and you can sign up on those sites and become a member and get a discount, get uh, stuff like free shipping when you get auto ship. A lot of stuff, InfoWarsTeam.com, InfoWarsHealth.com, or 888 Nine nine two seven seven eight 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 seven eight nine nine two seven seven. You want any of the Infowars team to be able to answer any questions? Maybe you want to become a member and work on it. Become a member of InfowarsTeam.com. Pharmacist Ben Fuchs, we got to have you just guest host sometime uh, with 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 you and David Knight or something, so he can just ride shotgun with you. But because uh, David really compliments folks like yourself that are scientific, thank you so much. And we'll be we'll be listening next Monday, ten a.m. Central, to the Bright Side. <laughs>